communicates with God. Ask God for a definite touch. A definite touch. A definite touch. A definite touch. An undeniable touch. An undeniable touch. An undeniable touch. A shift in your life. A shift in your life. A shift. A shift. Ask him for a shift. Ask him for a shift. A time comes when the grace of God upon the life of a man creates a torrent of influence. At that point, a shift has taken place. There is a shift. There is a shift. Ask him for something tangible. For a tangible walk. A tangible hand. To descend upon your life. We ask for a shift in the spirit. A shift. A shift. A shift in the spirit. By the workings of the grace of God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. We ask for a shift. We ask for a shift. We ask for a shift. in the name of jesus that kind of shift that took place on the life of saul such that people began to ask is, is saul among the prophets a definite shift it has never happened before but the fountain broke loose that day there was an oppression that came from his life that is not normally found around him. A capacity broke out and it was the workings of the spirit that he plugged into. People began to ask, is Saul, is he among the prophets? Ah, we ask for a shift tonight. Grant us that shift in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We were talking about uh, inspiration in the afternoon. It's very critical, very critical piece. Amen. So we said that in inspiration, God operates the hum human mind by his spirit. He makes us think his thoughts. Hallelujah makes us think his thoughts he plants his thoughts in our hearts and we begin to think his thoughts and his thoughts begin to enlarge between the faculties of our mind it's a great experience we saw that the key word in inspiration is remembrance amen is what amen. remembrance he shall bring to your remembrance the things that I have told you. That is the walking of the Holy Spirit that is in the context of inspiration. For there is a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. Number three. Inspiration is normally accompanied with utterance, is the mother of utterance. So when the fountain of inspiration is activated, it travels along with another fountain called utterance. Psalms 45, verse 1 and 2. Psalms 45, verse 1 and 2. Are you there in Psalms 45? Psalms 45, verse 1 and 2. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue 
is the pen of a ready writer. You see, there's a reaction that is taking place in the heart. See, that reaction that is taking place in the heart is activating the tongue for expression. Now, we have not finished the scripture. Verse 2. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. You see, when that inspiration begins to well up upon your heart, then grace is poured where? Upon thy lips. As the fountain of inspiration is a two-stream kind of fountain. The grace of God walking through the river of the Spirit comes into your heart and then grace is poured upon your lips. You see, the river of inspiration can be so mighty and if you don't have a means of expressing that river, if it's locked up in the chambers, it's, it's very difficult to control. It's either you have a pen and as the thoughts are flowing, you are writing down, or grace is poured upon thy lips. So a lot of times when inspiration is born, you receive utterance, spirit, energized capacity to communicate the heart of God and to relate it to the heart of man. That is a kind of stream that inspiration brings. Now, it is because of this possibility that finds expression in inspiration that a man under inspiration can carry the message of God. And not just the message of God. He can also receive the ability to communicate on God's behalf. Because inspiration also travels with a stream of utterance. It is the mother of utterance. Are you still with me? All right. Now, let's take another scripture to confirm that. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Inspiration travels with utterance. It travels with utterance. When the effect of the welling up of the Spirit of God begins to besiege your mind and uh, you are indicting a good matter, there is also another river. Grace is poured upon my lips. The Lord had given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened me morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear as the land. Next verse. The Lord God had opened my ear and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Next verse. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spiting. Next verse. For the Lord will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. And I shall not be ashamed. Go back to verse 4. Let's pick it one by one. And you follow the sequence. The Lord has given me a tongue. Of the learning. Are you with me? Now this scripture starts by talking about the tongue, the ability for utterance to speak articulately the mind of God. Then he began to tell us the mechanism that the tongues operate, the tongue operates with. Say, waking at me morning by morning. I begin to hear an inspiration. So the power, the force that the tongue is operating with is tied to what he hears when God comes in the morning time to inspire him. That is where his tongue gets the capacity for utterance from. Are you still with me? 
Now, inspiration travels with the fountain of utterance. Don't forget that. All right. Now, stay with me. Let's take some examples of uh, of inspiration. Some examples. Some things that happen because of inspiration. Okay? Uh, Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 1. No, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 1. 1 Corinthians 2, 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 if you can master inspiration you are a strong man if you can master it how to work with it i said we should bring uh, guitars oh even me forgot my own so i'm not expecting you to remember Mm. hallelujah and your own is sick all right so our experimentation will, is going to be defective. Yes, Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Next verse. For I did, no, not now. For I determined not to know anything among you, said Jesus Christ and him crucified. Next verse. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Next verse. And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now my emphasis is the demonstration of the spirit. It's different from the demonstration of power. Are you with me? Now, so I want to show you examples of activities that are powered by inspiration. Is that okay? They are what? Powered by inspiration. Now, it's, it's needful for us to know that there is something of the Holy Spirit that our generation is about to lose. There is something of the Holy Ghost. That our generation is about to lose. And that is the things that pertain to that category called demonstrations of the spirit. Our generation is about to lose it. A lot of it was in Kenneth Hagin's ministry. A lot of those demonstrations of the spirit. And it, it, it is purely an act, an activity of inspiration. So those things that were seen in the early revival, in fact, the way we even order church these days doesn't give accommodation for such expression. For instance. Are you with me? For instance. When you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence of your baptism was what? You spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave you utterance. That activity of speaking in tongues under the influence of the Holy Spirit is one of the, de- is the initial demonstration of the Spirit. But that's not all. Because speaking in tongues is an initial evidence. Initial evidence that you are filled with the Holy Spirit, not final evidence. There are other evidences that reveal that you are under the influence of the Spirit. What you are doing is inspired by the Spirit. Remember the Bible says that holy men of old, they speak as they were carried by the Spirit. That's inspiration. They allowed themselves to be born in the river of inspiration, in the stream of inspiration. So the utterance that they they spoke was not utterance that was based on what they intended to speak it was beyond their will. It was a river of inspiration that was responsible for their utterance. So we said that inspiration is most often the mother of 
utterance. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spake with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Second thing. Second activity that is an evidence that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you have ever had this experience before? You, you danced in the Spirit. Inside of you there was one music playing and it was so sweet. And there was no music outside. You found yourself dancing. You see, you will need to flow with the river of what is bubbling inside of you. In order for you to be able to dance. And then somebody outside is looking at you. And seeing you dance. But that dancing is as a result of inspiration. So dancing in the spirit is also an evidence that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life. It's a demonstration of the spirit. When last did you find somebody dancing in the spirit in church? You know, it happens here many times. The whole place breaks and strength. I thought you've known one day he, he is this some assault uh, under the influence. Right there. <laughs> Close to the speaker there, he, he, he did something. He, he doesn't do it every day. But he was carried in the spirit that day. And he had enough liberty to express it. And you see, you see, you see, when you are able to flow, synchronize with the movement of the spirit like that, you are promoted. You have allowed the spirit expression and you have allowed the spirit ventilation. That's what the spirit is doing. He was dancing that day and you just yielded. You allowed yourself to be carried in this. We are too dignified. We are too well structured. Everything is going on. The Bible says, and ye shall be like calves in the stall. Calves. Uh, do you know when these small, small goats, when they are, they are born, they come and take small meat. And then they go and jump. He said, you'll be like that. You'll be like that. There are times you'll be like, you just jump. That jumping is not because, it, although the goat was jumping under the influence of milk, that this milk is good. <laughs> but there'll be an, a, an, a different reason for you to do like that. Inspiration. Inspiration. The Holy Ghost was dancing and you could not but dance inspiration that dance is not coming because there's music outside it's coming because there's music inside and the only way to express what is inside and feel better according to the ventilation inside was to follow in a strange dance step. this that dance step may not have existed among men it may not synchronize with rhythm and pattern but it's an expression it's a demonstration of what the spirit is doing in your heart inspiration have you ever seen a man under the influence of the holy ghost and he begins to laugh it happens to you the thing is that you people don't bring it to church it happens outside it happens in the house hallelujah now if you preach a lot by inspiration there are sometimes you will laugh and the laughter is not is inspirational it gives ventilation to the whole house some people get healed just because of that laughter. If it's been long since you laugh like that, uh, it means that the Holy Spirit is, is chained in your life. He's chained. He's on chains. Inspiration. Laughing in the Spirit. The, this one is, that one is different from the one that you are not necessarily in the prayer mood. And the Holy Ghost is praying. And then your spirit now realized that there's prayer going on. And then once you enter, he now carries you. That one is initiated from the spirit realm. The one you are doing is initiated from your realm. Two of them are powerful. But the one that the Holy Spirit, you can even start praying. And then at a point, the Holy Spirit begins to pray through you. It is no longer that your prayer point agenda that is prospering at that level is the Holy Ghost looking for a vocal cord to use to express some things that will give God legitimacy to begin to operate in some matters. It's just like you are praying in tongues. Are you with me? Is you praying? 
and then suddenly as you were praying you were cut off by the spirit the utterance was no longer your utterance another kind of utterance that is not humanly you are not the one speaking you are not the one speaking it's the holy ghost speaking to you have you had that experience before that's praying in the spirit is a demonstration of the spirit. it takes you over and you begin to pray and then you begin to groan you cannot mimic groaning no you can't fake it anytime you groan you groaned because there were issues to communicate that cannot be communicated in human language so the spirit now took you and gave you some strange utterances that only spirits can speak and he used your vocal cord to communicate it to settle a matter so that is praying in the spirit is the spirit that is the operating system you don't even know what you're handling but it's so heavy and the utterance is downloaded from heaven your vessel is overtaking you are brought into a matter that you know nothing about in the spirit totally in the spirit you understand it's unfruitful but praying with your spirit is that i have my prayer point and i'm praying this person is sick so i'm praying bada, 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 bada. i'm using my spirit to prosecute the prayer and i keep going prosecuting the prayer and i can do that for four hours i can sense a release and believe that god has gone to work on that life that is a different experience from praying in the holy spirit comes to look for a victim to use for that assignment it is spirit induced it is spirit oriented it is its source is in the holy ghost those are two different experiences now you must know at what point you have moved from praying with your spirit and by an act of the sovereignty of god he picks you up and he wants you to participate in an ongoing intercessory adventure that the holy ghost himself has sponsored the utterances that you even speak even in tongues they are different praying in the spirit is an example of the demonst it's a proof that you are spiritually healthy if it's long since you have ever experienced that the holy ghost overtakes you and you use your vocal cord like that it means you should query your spiritual health if it's been long since something spontaneous happened that you did not plan it just resulted it means there is something wrong with your spiritual health most often it is a sign that your prayer measure is not being filled because if your prayer measure is being filled consistently, you'll be a very spontaneous human being. Very, very spontaneous. Very, very spontaneous. And if you are experienced in the spirit, experience, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of advantages you have over and above the average believer. In almost everything. In the office, you have an advantage. If you're an experienced man in the spirit you know how to, oh my god is you you are losing a lot if you don't develop your capacity in the spirit hallelujah another demonstration of the spirit is singing spiritual songs the song comes at the spur of the moment sometimes you cannot put the song to human language it's a spirit born song only a melody a tune a chant just passes through and the more you go on with that tune the more you go on with that chant ventilation comes into your spirit it's a purely purely an act of uh, inspiration an act of inspiration and when you stay in inspiration it's as if you receive the refreshing of a man that is bathing purely an act of inspiration hallelujah now that's why the music ministry is an arm of the prophetic ministry it's an arm of the prophetic ministry it's supposed to run on the operating system of inspiration if it's going to bless your spirit so if a music minister doesn't have prayed up capital prayed up capital prayed of capital prayed up capital you have prayed and prayed and prayed and come to a level where 
the possibility of pliability in the hands of the Holy Spirit exists. Don't come and waste people's time. But if you have prayed up and you have that possibility of pliability, when you come and you begin to minister, the Holy Spirit will begin to guide you and he will, he will give you the song that is sung in heaven. That's also, this ministry runs on inspiration. It runs on what? You don't need to have a good voice to have a music ministry. You just need to have a spirit that is pliable. Spirit that is pliable. How many of you have heard uh, Pastor Chris Delvan worship? Oh my. His voice, I think my, my, my voice is better than his voice. But in that, his husky voice, there's a way he... Inspiration. Inspiration can make what people call bad. It can use, yes, to be good. People might call their voice bad. When it is used for the function of transmitting inspiration, it is just so good. It's good enough for what it's used for. Hallelujah. Now, a lot of people might say, okay, you have not gone to school... You don't speak proper English. Don't worry. Just know how to tap into inspiration. The inspiration will not help your English. The English will still be bad. Yeah. That one, the Holy Ghost will not help you there. Okay? The pronunciations will still be bad. The, the tenses will still be mixed up. However, what will be the wine flowing from that channel will be so pure that people will not remember the vehicle from whence it came. Hallelujah. People will forget the vehicle. They will forget the vehicle from whence it came. Inspiration is powerful. Inspiration is powerful. And I trust God, I trust God, I trust God that that fountain will be unlocked in your life and in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so all these activities are activities that should be commonplace in the house of God where the spirit of God is king. But more and more it's becoming an alien practice because inspiration is no longer part of our worship life. Hallelujah. Inspiration is critical. Now, the next thing I need to do is to show you the landscape of prophecy. Because the gift of prophecy is built on the operating system of inspiration. Right? It's built on what? The operating system of inspiration. You, you, you cannot fully handle the subject of prophecy if your audience doesn't know what inspiration is. The Bible says that prophecy doesn't have its origin with man. But holy men of old, they speak as they were carried by the Spirit. So it was the river of inspiration that was responsible for the utterances that they speak. There are some unique things about the gift of prophecy. And anybody that is a prophet must have a lot of prophecy come from his vessel. Unfortunately, we are in a time in the body of Christ where people don't know what prophecy means. Prophecy. First of all, uh, you know, all the things we have been discussing have been, you know, within the context of personal experiences with the Holy Spirit. There's another layer of experiences that are gathered, captured in the Holy Ghost, which are not personal experiences, they are experiences that should be, uh, that can be, ha can, 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 we can have on the congregational level. Now, that kind of experience is not a personal experience. It's, it's an experience that is suited for the congregational level, like this. All right? Uh, for instance, prophecy is not a personal experience prophecy is um, a flow of the gift of god that has the context of the congregation as the operating system 
Now, if you go to the supermarket and you begin to prophesy, you are in error. Because the operation of that gift is within the context of the local church. Are you with me? Now, there are a lot of things about manifestations of the Spirit that I would like us to take note of as we move on route the path to the study of prophecy. Now, when we get into that study, which we cannot finish this weekend, we'll have to continue it next weekend, next month end. Uh, but let's, th- let's start the journey. Now, the first thing we need to do is to go to the book of Romans. Inspiration is a strong part of the livelihood of the Christian community. Inspiration is a strong part of it. When inspiration begins to go and when revelation begins to go, the people perish. The people, <laughs> they, they begin to die spiritually. Mm, they begin to die spiritually. When inspiration is shut down, when revelation is shut down, where there is no vision, what, what does the Bible say? The people perish. So it is the presence and the liberty that the Holy Spirit has among the people and in the congregation that is the life of that, that congregation. If the Holy Spirit doesn't have liberty in that congregation, the congregation is called the congregation of the dead. Yeah. It is the Spirit that gives life to a community. And if the Spirit of God is driven from your village, it means your village is the congregation of of the dead. People are meeting together but not by the spirit. They are gathering but not by the spirit. They are conferring to discuss but not by the spirit. That everything they discuss, everything they say that is devoid of inspiration, it is, it is an expression of a wise position in the flesh and it will lead the people to more bondage and greater bondage and gross bondage. Yes. The only possibility of light, advancement, improvement, among the people is that there is one that has a link, a lifeline to the corridor of inspiration. Where there is what? No vision. The people, the perish. So maybe you are a pastor and because you want order, you want everything to happen. Oh, where's Boniface? Boniface, leave that place. Come here. Let's act drama for, for a while. Now, listen. Because you want to establish order. You want the whole service to be, well, and you want to finish the service in 45 minutes, well, and you, yeah, you want to run seven services, well, and every service must be 35 minutes, and you must take offering, you must take. So we, we put everything. Even when you are doing praise and worship, don't shake too much, it will take time. You are worthy. So we are all in the flesh trying to. What we have done is that we have transformed the floor into a performance state. And we have cut off the possibility of inspiration in the name of two, three, four, seven power pass services. And the people go home lean without a touch. They don't know what it means to touch the spirit of God anymore. So Christianity becomes a drag along experience. And they do not, they do not drink from the fountain of waters that is alive. No inspiration. Because we, are, we have a strong time regiment. It must be 45 minutes. So you come to the, up to the pulpit, you can't teach. You can't ground the people in knowledge. And what you do is to make declarations that on Tuesday, something great. Amen. Now, you, you don't need to pray to do that. You will receive a phone call. You used to say amen where you go there. Don't deceive us. Don't deceive us. The people know there will be no phone call, but you know why they are, you see, we are called believers. That's our default mode. (laughs) But you see, (laughs) you see, there was something that took place in Rama. In Rama, the prophets had a prescribed way of pastime. The way they pass time is not to watch Champions League and 
Premier League. No. He said, when you are living here, you will meet some people carrying harps. Now, can you look for pipe organ? Pipe. Pipe. Now, they'll be carrying harps. All right. So, it shows you that that activity they do on Rama, they have a lot of string instruments. What they do is they get the guys on the instruments to begin to play. I hope you know that's a very fertile atmosphere for what? Inspiration. Oh, they get all the guys on the string instruments. I don't have time today to show you the relationship between the prophetic and the string instrument. Get me a minstrel. That was what Elisha said. Where did he learn that one from? That's the past time experience of a prophet. The major assignment of a prophet is intercession. It's intercession. That's his work. That's what he does as full time work. Intercession. Ah, this, your pipe is dry. Look for a pipe that is robust. Robust. I want to take you on a journey to a place. Eh? Okay. Now, so the guy, this is the pastor now, he's trying to make the church orderly. You see, one thing you need to know about music is the soul likes it, whether it is inspired or not. Okay. So somebody comes and he's singing praise and worship. If he sings three, it's likely that one of them will, your soul will like it. But that doesn't mean it is inspired. When inspiration comes, you don't need to like the song. As the song is flowing, you won't know when you begin to sing. You see, inspiration draws from the fountain that is in the accurate context that you are supposed to exist. The presence of God is the habitat for man. That's what Eden was. It was, it was a place of the presence of God. And so it was very easy for you to stumble into God hear the voice of god in motion it, it that's the habitat when you begin to function by inspiration the presence of god is invoked over a place and suddenly your response is not is not really is not really your intention your response is is your default response to the presence of god as programmed by god from the beginning so i want seven services even if this the church is such that in this fifth service was half full i had to retain all the workers all the ushers everybody to be part of the services so that i will count them seven times and say this is the numerical story that's performance but that was not how worship and prayer was done in rama in rama there were string instruments all kinds of you will meet you will meet men carrying harps so there were plenty and then when they release the string instruments it will be a very fertile atmosphere for what for inspiration they were never tired of it because when the presence of god comes you will never be tired of it if you if you come into a place and there's presence on monday and you come there's presence on tuesday there is something you can never be tired of that's the presence of God it 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 it's it, 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 it's the mother of all inspiration there is a spirit in man the inspiration of the Almighty it goes beyond spirit influence it captures the soul and then it, it, it begins to operate your mind your mental faculty it is in that place that understanding is born so you don't only have the experience in your spirit your soul too was carried along until you got a perfect understanding of what the holy spirit was driving at in the first place before he began to arise from within your spirit there's an atmosphere that is fertile for inspiration glory ah you have carried us too far reduce your volume i will tell you when to there's an atmosphere that is fertile for inspiration you are not very powerful if you are not in a fertile inspiration atmosphere 
And you know we cannot invoke God. So as you create a fertile atmosphere, you begin to pray. You begin to pray. So those, that was how the prophets used to pray. And then very soon somebody stumbles into it and begins to prophesy. That was how the prophets passed time in Ramah. And Paul, Saul stumbled into their midst. The atmosphere was so fertile and God was looking for a vocal call. It was Saul he found. And he prophesied from morning till what? A new comma that was not taught what prophecy was. And I can imagine men like Sam, Samuel, they were at the background. They were laughing. <laughs> oh, God have mercy. I have a dream. The dream I have is that we'll raise a tower in this city where prayers will be flowing for 24 hours. Yes. A portal will be open. Angels can travel from the spirit realm into the natural without knowing. I have a dream. That all nations will travel to this land to come and drink of the purity of the river that flows, gushes from that fountain. Ah, the beauty of this land may not be in the roots, but it will come to pass where men will throng, they will, they will throng here to because of a river. A river uh, that the, the, the portal of that river is so massive and there's so much of it for everybody to take a portion. It, it, I have a dream. I have a dream. A 24 hour system. When you sleep and wake up, somebody's crying. Yeah. Uh, 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 until it becomes until a land is totally dis delivered from the stranglehold of witchcraft and a new order is set in motion. I have a dream. A dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. There's so much religion. Everybody is talking, talking without inspiration. We have all kinds of ministerial regalia, scholars, aprons, all, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of things, wigs. Oh, they, I saw one the other day, I said, oh my, this is a new style. And there's no life, no inspiration. Ah, 24 hours. 24 hours. I heard that Zen Zedov was able to do 24-hour prayers for 100 years in Germany. They, we wanted to visit that place for three days dry. And go on. There's demons can't operate there. No. For a hundred, a century, there, there was 24 hours prayers for 100 years. was the situation of Rama musical instruments and prayer so it was easy for people to come in and begin to prophesy there was an atmosphere that was created they wanted to simulate the environment of Eden on the mountains of Rama somebody came to arrest people on the mountain and then he was caught up in the river he had no intention to do what he did. He was carried. The pool of inspiration was so strong that he disarmed a soldier man. And he became a prophet. Ah, I have a dream. Oh, rivers of living water will break out the vessels of common people, common people, ordinary people, until a mighty fortress is formed in the name of our God. A passageway from eternity to time like the womb will be created oh it will be so sweet there are some times that gabriel the angel will come into in, in, into the circle and not know that he has changed domain because something was created deliberately to simulate an atmosphere that is friendly to inspiration where there is no vision the people Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me read the scripture to us quickly. Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. 
Romans 12, are you there from verse 6? The Bible says, Having therefore gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us. Now, this is the first category of gifts, the first layer and level of gifts. Hmm? These gifts are not gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit. This one are gifts of grace. They are empowerments that the Holy Spirit releases into believers for service in the local church, in the congregation. And I need to tell us that you cannot serve God effectively except God gives you a gift. Service to God is not done on the on our natural capacity service to god is done on the strength of a gift if god wants you to serve him he gives you a gift it's by that gift that you can serve him in the calling that god has given unto you the first layer of gifts that the bible speaks about and they are gifts of grace there are abilities that we have we flow in them easily because there is a grace investment along that line that gives us the capacity to de do these things that uh, as if it was natural with us and so the bible says that in the local church in a congregation like this there is there are different kinds of gifts that god has given according to the allocation of grace that he has made available now let's take a, a quick look at the list you will find a friendly gift. It's a friendly one there. Having then gifts are differing according to the grace that is given unto us. Whether prophecy. Now so we have prophecy here as the gift that is powered by the grace of God. And we also have prophecy as a gift that is powered. That is, that's a spiritual gift. Now, I need to tell you what is the difference between prophecy as a manifestation of the grace of God that is given to an individual for service in the local church and the gift of prophecy as a spiritual gift. There are differences. Because we need to clear these discrepancies as we move on. Because one, one, one of the major lifelines of the church is the gift of prophecy in its pure manifestation. And that's why Paul said, despise not prophesies. Now, the devil will create so many scenarios that will make us feel that it is better for us to shut down prophecy. But Paul said, despise not, prophesize. Let that lifeline never be shut down in the congregation of the people of God. People need to be instructed and taught properly so that we can manage that lifeline. Because in it, there is a lot of power that the church is going to benefit a lot from. So keep that lifeline open. That's what Paul said. All right, now let's check the list. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry or be diligent in our ministry. That word ministry there is the same word for service. Let us wait. Let us be waiters have you ever been to a restaurant and when you came somebody advanced in your direction he's waiting to do service to you right he's waiting to do service to you and so you say okay what do you have on the menu we have this 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 is what i want the reason why the person is there is because of a need for you a need 
to serve you. Now, he said, those ones that have been given service gifts. Just a man that is given service gifts, when he comes to a place, he notices things that are not in order. And he volunteers. He volunteers to be part of the machinery, the administration of that problem. And then he waits on it to deploy service in that area of need. He said, let those... You see, you can be a high place person in society. Are you with me? In society. Somebody like a governor, somebody like um, a, high, a top ranking politician. But your gift in this place, for instance, can be a service gift. So you have to forget about what you are in your office and you switch to that service mode. You see, anyone that has been re received the gift of service, let him function like a waiter that is available to deploy service. Notice the instruction that was given to the guy that has the gift of grace, which is prophecy. He said, let him prophesy. What? According to the measure of faith. Now, we'll come back there. We'll come back there. In fact, that's my emphasis. But I want to show you that I don't just want to isolate that issue. So we have a lot of people in the body of Christ that don't know what kind of grace God has given. What kind of grace is available to them. All right. Now, in this list here, there should be, before you were called to become an evangelist, this list you should have a designation in this list first let's keep on going or he that exalted on his exaltation he that give it let him do it with simplicity so it means there are people in the body of christ in the local church for instance whose assignment is to sponsor the work they don't make a big deal out of giving. The beauty of prosecuting that service in the area of giving is the ability to do it with simplicity. Yes. When a lot of people are sent to school on your account that you are not related to, but it's not something you preach. So the house keeps running because there are people that attend to their own area of service. Hallelujah. No, so, so God knew that when a community like this begins to gather, a lot of needs will be available. So he deploys functionaries by an act of his grace that is at work in them. Apart from my calling as a preacher, God told me when I was seeking his face in 2002, he said, you will not go into full-time ministry yet. I will give you a job and you will invest in many destinies, many destinies. That was where my grace as a giver was revealed to me. So leave pulpit. There is something I do apart from this pulpit. He said, I will invest in what? In many destinies. Thou shalt invest in many destinies and a great network shall be formed. There's a particular brother that was staying with me. He was the one I was sending to the bank every month to pay people's fees, to accept every month. And he was wondering the kind of money that was being spent. It was a covenant between me and God. Apart from being a preacher, I'm called into the ministry of helps in the area of supporting destinies to stand. How I wish I were stronger financially than I am now. <laughs> Many more people would have been blessed. But I'm telling you, you didn't know before. I'm just telling you today. Because the beauty of that kind of service is that it should be done. How? 
and you will never hear me mention the names of the people that that line of ministry affected in my own opinion is too insignificant and i'm trusting god to have the capacity to do more god told me he said i've called you like abraham abraham did not just have a ministry he led the people that god gave him not just into ministry he led them he had an economic base for them he had when guys that were born in his household took on a coalition of military from four nations so he had a defense structure in his clan he led them into establishing a functional clan functional clan they had an economic base they had a business they were doing they had defense they had god told me that my job doesn't end just because i preach i will have to go into the lives of the people he will lead me and i will support them until they stand he will invest in many destinies and a great network shall be formed there was a time where for five years they did not promote me i went to this zoo for 48 hours and i told god that if it is true that i've failed in that covenant you gave me tell me after i prayed for 48 hours this next seven days after that prayer it was not promotion time they called me from abuja that your name appeared on the notice board as promoted what the people in abuja did not know was that they backdated that promotion for four years backward and they promoted me the next year again it has never happened in the history of my office the covenant i have with god is that as long as it is his will for me to remain in that office meanwhile i've been crying for him to release me anyway but as long as it is if i keep investing to those destinies that he brings i must be promoted if you like hold it it they will do it they will backdate it they, i've seen the pattern He said, he that giveth, let him give with simplicity. Don't make it. No, don't make a boast. Because there is nothing you are doing that the next person sitting close to you cannot do. Oh, what am I, what job am I doing? That all of you can do what I do in my office. So I am not better than you because I have the job. Because you have the cognitive capacity even to do it better it is a means by which i can deploy a line of service and i've done that for many years hallelujah i told my wife you will not be a widow because the covenants that god i have with god i've kept them yes i kept them Meanwhile, some of the people you will keep that covenant, God will say, okay, you support this person. Support this person. Support it. The person will now rise up and take a spare and check you. But you know what? The calling, you got it from God. The fact that somebody used a spare on you doesn't mean you should stop. It means maybe, mm, I don't know. You continue. Nobody should be strong enough to be able to influence you to stop a calling if they can influence you to stop a calling it means your lifeline has been cut off the reason by for which you have favor in the presence of god has been affected we will know that god spoke to you to do it if after somebody wounds you you still continue say ah, uh -uh, this conv this this conviction it, it transcends it transcends it transcends an event that is contrary there's something stronger than a contrary event that is powering this person. If we all, we all are deploying 
our grace for service effectively according to that which was given to us when a new convert comes into the house of god and he sees people nobody said this person should be doing this this person is convinced that I should be doing it nobody said that person should be that person is convinced see this one bringing money nobody manipulated if somebody comes a new convert comes and he sees a well-ordered house operating in the grace that god has made available such a person eh? such a person will never look for an alternative other than jesus and in that context the person can actually be disciple to find his own destiny having grace different according to the grace of god now when we come into the subject of church life that's when we are going to touch these matters not now then you see what the devil has done to the body of christ how many destinies have been marginalized our generation was called to recover a heritage that is about to be lost yes that's what our generation was called to do there are issues of heritage at stake and you were raised and i was raised i hope you know it's a generation that will solve the problem of our nation because it's a generation that started the problem a new breed without greed a radical opposition against unrighteousness men that have the grace of god functioning in their lives if you study that scripture you will find out that there is a grace of god called governments and administration there are people that god will put grace upon that can actually sit in government house and stare the state into redemption they have their such grace there's such grace and if, if somebody operates in that grace it, it, the person will be known in the house because of the kind of organizational skills not that the person went to read public administration or business administration it, it, it's a function of grace where is pastor dan call dan now pastor dan has the grace of administration he didn't study administration. In fact, he's an engineer. As you are seeing him with coat there, he's an engineer. But he has that grace. Hallelujah. He has it on his life. He's so strong. And I am a spontaneous person. And my own wiring is not as predictable as the wiring that, you know, carries the grace for administration. So I know that I cannot do what he's doing. It's not my wiring. I'm more on the spontaneous. One day he gave me, gave me an announcement. I should go and take an announcement. When I came here, I started conducting the deliverance. After the deliverance, I went back. And he, he told me the announcement has not been done. Then I knew that the person that should be taking an announcement will have a different wiring. The person that is... His own, the move of God in him is predictable. <laughs> As I seen this guy, this guy can be a governor of a state and he will do well. Because we, are, we have seen that gift of administration in his service to God. That's how men are supposed to be identified for, for work. Have you found the grace that is on your life? Or you are just there? I mean, I found one. In that context, my own grace is given. So I had to read. How will I do it that it will be accepted? Say, do it with simplicity. Don't make it. Don't use it to manipulate people. That's okay. Okay, if you don't do this, forget about that thing. Forget about it. No. Give the person an allowance. If the person has a bad heart, give the person an allowance to even fight you. There should be no string attached to that line of service. We are waiters. Waiting to serve a generation as the Lord gives us. As long as I do that. If they like, let witches gather in my village and say, Did that man not advance? Let it. Whatsoever is born of God. He does what? Right. I have a covenant that keeps me going. 
and as long as I keep doing it they say oh in this place in Benue State there is a level to which you can't get in ministry we came to break those records they say oh you cannot start an international ministry from here it's better you go to Abuja then you can reach the world oh our branch in Scotland they have had two contacts from here and you may not believe but we will not only have branches we will bring the nations here we will bring them to this land to learn the ways of God now let's let's look at prophecy as a gift first of all we need to talk about the content of prophecy the content what is the content what is uh, the scope of prophecy the scope of prophecy and this is general stroke okay someone that prophesies is either is either exalting is either exalting and when I say exalting I'm talking about building people up all right someone that is prophesying is either administering the comfort of the Lord someone that is prophesying can actually bring a rebuke from God someone that is prophesying can bring an instruction from God All right it can be an exhortation it can be an instruction it can be a rebuke it can be an administration of comfort now these are the broad strokes of prophecy all of this can be achieved by that gift of grace called prophecy but the difference between the gift of grace called prophecy and the gift of prophecy by the spirit is this one see in the inspiration part right maybe you are praying in the morning and then suddenly I pick something about sister grace God shows me something I say I'm going to give her favor she has served me hallelujah okay I've received it then because I and grace we see once in a month so when I see her I say sister grace God said he will do so and so and lift you up because you have served him you see I received inspiration I received something about grace and I went to sister grace and told her that prophecy is speaking the inspired mind of God this kind of prophecy came by grace every believer has this kind of grace to be able to receive from God and deploy it according every believer has this one have you ever received a scripture before in your spirit is there anybody here that has never had that experience you were praying and a scripture was laid on your heart you have never had that experience in your life God gave you a scripture no we are you see this is a clinic it's an open world hallelujah don't be shy about your condition because that's an ailment it's a spiritual ailment for you never to have received a scripture from God if you receive scriptures from God it means that your receptacle is okay all right so every believer should be able to receive something from God and speak it out. It takes a grace to receive and to release. That is the basic architecture of prophecy. 
and the utterance can be an administration of comfort the utterance can be a rebuke the utterance can be an exhortation the utterance can be a what an instruction that is not the gift of prophecy but that is the operation of the grace of prophecy to re receive from God and to speak it for hallelujah number two hey I've jumped something in the gift of prophecy by the spirit huh? this is what happens God comes so mightily upon this my son and God personalizes himself inside of him all that God does and needs from him is his vocal cord right and then God begins to use him to speak now God speaks in the first person I am the Lord it's not the guy talking is God has a reason within him and manifested himself inside of him seized his vocal cord and is using his vocal cord to talk to us now in that one he is filled by God he is also seized by God but you see in the normal grace of prophecy I receive the word I can even determine when to convey it it's very very easy receptacle release but in this one you can't determine anything the Spirit of God comes upon you so mightily such that he manifests himself inside of you in such a real way and he seizes you and seizes your vocal cord and then he begins to speak through your vocal cord in the first person not that the lord said no in prophecy in prophecy your mind is not involved in prophecy your emotion is not involved in prophecy your will is not involved god seizes a vessel and he begins to speak through his vocal cord as you saw yesterday you saw the lady yesterday huh? how many of you were here yesterday now we we a true house of god you have that kind of manifestation if where you call your church nobody has ever prophesied for the and it, you know pentecostal churches have gone that way and they have shut down that that's the easiest way for you to have witches in that congregation and people will not know when nothing spontaneous happens everything is regulated uh -uh. a witch can be on the board of the church and then suddenly people just keep dying anyhow people keep dying anyhow all kinds of things cancer here all kinds of affliction so we need to allow things that men are not in control of to be operational in a living house because the devil can only operate and pitch his tent in a dead house and i've seen this and i'm being a victim of this a victim of a dead house and i saw all kinds of things that the devil was capable of and it came to pass we decided to begin to put some fire and some things began to boil then some spontaneous things began to happen and there, there was intense persecution it was later we knew why the persecution came because that was the only way for the mantle of witchcraft to break the witches were persecuted through the structure through the system trying to cage when you see a place where they fight they fight the elders fight the pastors fight in order to ensure that there's no spontaneous activity that place is suspect 
where there is no vision the people perish it is a prison yard for slaves and the captors want to ensure that the slavery continue so anything that will bring another dimension here that we cannot understand There is no way you can successfully read the Bible and come to the conclusion of the fact that the church should not be a spontaneous place. Ah, that the days of miracles are over. Oh, what is it? What are you reading? A Hare Krishna book or something. There is no way you can read this Bible and you can play away with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You cannot successfully do that. But people that work for the devil and come to the knowledge of the fact that if we can cut the Holy Ghost out of this matter, all we have is a, an unassuming congregation. Ah, the enslaved trade continues. If we are looking for somebody to kill, to balance a spiritual account, slave trade continues. And as long as we keep the people spiritually low, they cannot fight back. When we come to take their soul, we take this one's kidney to the cover. A lot of dark things will happen when there is no stream of light. You can tell which church has died. You can tell which church is alive. And you see, you see, greater still, we don't even understand the implication of dead churches in a city the, the altar living altars are the only means by which advancement can come to the land yes the government that operates in the spirit must occasion the pedestal for advancement before the structures of government can pick up the button from that point and begin to advance if you like come with good intentions when there's darkness in the land you will cave in under pressure you will cave in under pressure so living altars are the only pathways by which peoples can be liberated and lands can be free there are several breakthroughs you can have in the spirit that electricity will come to your village in fact there are some kind of people that will not ascend the throne of power until some things break and then that if you look at our politic, political system you feel that everything has been called wrong there's nothing of light that can break through ah you are not aware of the power that raised jesus christ from the dead because we need many more people to go into politics many more people many more of our people we need to go to the field and represent god on those thrones but we need living altars to power their rising. We need living altars to power their destiny. We need living altars to power the prophecy that has been spoken about the land. That prophecy will be dormant until living altars come to redeem them. The church is a powerful institution. But the devil has learned how to raise the gate of hell against us. I hope you know what the gate of hell is. Is the gate of death he knows that as long as we are linked with him that is called the resurrection and the life there are possibilities that darkness cannot control so the gate of death now tries to come cut off all the lifelines to our source point and then we we'll become measured into time as people under the mercy of satan because our only capacity is in the flesh then the slavery begins and it begins a generational kind of slavery from one generation they cut people off in the church with witchcraft their children too begin to grow and they are coming to the slaughter until something radical something spontaneous a light now sparks i don't know how many years of darkness that your family has been subjected to you are being managed in the cocoons managed managed in the prison yard 
when somebody decides to go restless and then there is a spark the variables are altered because that spark has come how many of you have done crusades and then the people in the village now say that your prayer is giving us problem that your prayer it, it, the, the prayer is creating another possibility that is going to dwarf the template under which the slavery was was programmed it's a lot of capacity that finds expression when the light of god breaks out that's why we cannot allow the devil win he he's so popular now he's so popular we made him popular. We pastors, we made the devil so popular, so relevant, so significant. Because we don't know where light dwells. Please help me preach to your neighbor. We need just one spark. Just one spark. We were going to a place to pay bright price for a lady that we wanted to marry for somebody. And we heard that before we came, the person, kid, one cock poured blood buried the, this one i went and sat down then when we showed up the signs he was expecting in fact there was it, it happened as if he did nothing he did not want the marriage so he wanted to do something that would create one problem the thing he did didn't work we came when 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 he saw that the thing didn't work in fact the 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 meeting was very short because when it didn't work he just said okay all right oh my God. okay 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 and we we were done until we left then he created problem in that house but what he would have sat down to think uh -uh. these people that came here I went, Pastor Gideon went, Isaac Itodo went, other brethren went. <laughs> and we were, were sitting there. And his little village ritual had no impact. And he was wondering whether he didn't set the coordinates well. No, the coordinates were properly set. It's just that a spark came. John the Baptist, the Bible called him a burning and a shining light when you add that equation to darkness they so this gift is fought the gift of prophecy because it's one of the occasions that god has to speak by himself using a human vocal cord he speaks in first person i am the lord hallelujah if he speaks speaks and he breaks it's no longer pro prophecy no because he's speaking under inspiration if there's a gap wrong are you with me i am the lord i am the lord i am the lord i am the lord if you see a gap in the sequence he's cut off from the inspiration every other thing he's saying is from his head and in prophecy the mind is bypass the emotion is bypass the will is what is bad for us. All those things they call prophecy on Emmanuel TV, this TV, that TV, it's not prophecy. And if you are technically wrong, you will soon become practically wrong. You can't manage prophecy. You can't say, okay, come, they will prophesy. Then you can't manage. So let's call it what it is. It's a great potter. That God has an opportunity for God to address his people. Whereas in the gift of grace or prophecy, I receive. And then I decide when I, that God said this. But in this one, God is speaking by himself. And it's a river of inspiration. It's heavy. Hallelujah. It's so heavy. And if those spontaneous speakings cease from among us, the time will come when we'll become blind. Pastor James, you are from Naka. If the prayer intensity is not strong enough in Naka 
for people to receive spontaneous utterances you will lose sight in your leadership one of the signs of corporate health in a congregation is that god can still speak spontaneously when it is master managed it means the days of men have arisen men are the ones in control god is not the one in control there are some times maybe me and this sister we have a problem and then suddenly i come to church i can now generate prophecy because i've seen i've seen i've seen a case two two ladies like one pastor and one lady began to prophesy i am the lord i am the lord i am the lord i am the lord you are the husband of this my vessel that is prophesying now you are the husband of this my vessel and then the second sister now say it is a lie it is a lie the whole it was a strange a strange case meanwhile the pastor they are talking about is not even thinking about marriage <laughs> see in prophecy don't add emotion let emotion not be if not it will be wrong what god is doing in prophecy is that he's seizing a vocal cord and he's speaking directly through that vocal cord this this man here are you with me this man here is not part of the message so when you hear me say that god said that is a gift of word of wisdom word of knowledge in those ones the vessel is part of it i receive it and then i tell you what god said that's different but this one god is speaking for himself so humanity doesn't touch it and that's why the proof that a prophetic altar has been set up is that people can prophesy it's a it's, it's a sign of congregational health people can what Prophet. i remember those days on campus just a little prayer group a little prayer group that we used to pray together and one day we came for prayers and that was the, that day i felt so reluctant to come for prayers has it happened to you before please sorry sorry sit has it happened to you before you felt so reluctant to go for prayers and when you went that day there was demons had seen the vibration taking place in the spirit and they must have forecasted that god had something in mind with these people he, they will go and visit every member of that group and discourage you ah, that's when you will think of how for one month you have been feeding on Gary and so that day I, I literally dragged myself there and I began to pray reluctantly but well, we prayed we began to pray we began to pray and suddenly but God himself knows when we are discouraged one of the ways that he cures us from discouragement is this gift of prophecy from that our prayer group of like 23 people we saw many years ahead oh jesus the grace to prophesy came upon one sister and she began to prophesy she has that gift it's not everybody that has it too. but if you are a prophet the gift you should have more than every other gift is the gift of prophecy if you find a prophet that cannot prophesy eh? he, he, he doesn't do it regularly forget it, it's not a prophet the valve the grace and the gift that i establish on inspiration they are necessary to spark life i hope you know in that gift of grace you know you receive and then you release preaching is in that category Preaching is prophecy in that context. Because I received the message from God. And then what? I release. 
the way the message comes into your spirit and it sparks life you will know that it's from god that received it it's not dead it's alive are you with me okay music ministration should be in that first category but this one it is a raw utterance from god it is in prophecy those days that the lady revealed That you are going to be a great man of God. But the kingdom of darkness have sat about your life. And they have released a lady. If you conquer this lady, you will fulfill this great destiny. That was what she prophesied about me. I said, lady. My first reaction was fleshly. I was preparing like, like this. Malekemo Saminaka. It took five years for that lady to come. But all of that was captured in just one utterance. The utterance was for like five minutes. But the impact, because the lady was tempting me for five years. But the utterance was five minutes. And every time I come under this temptation, I run to God. I will hear that lady's voice. The kingdom of darkness has marked you. And the lady. So I lived in the pool of her utterance for five years of my life. It was the guiding rod, the staff, and the shield of strength that I walked with. For five years, prophecy is powerful. I went to preach somewhere, and a preacher had to preach before I preach. And the preacher, while he was preaching, while he was preaching, while he was preaching, he began to prophesy. And he came to me and he said, "You have not been called to pastor a denomination. You have not been." Yeah. <laughs> that the day I begin to pastor a denomination, the work with spoil in your hand. I said, I went back to God and I prayed. I said, God, I, one man was talking. <laughs> the other day, one man was talking the other day. He said, When you decide to run a ministry that is not a denomination whereas other pastors who struggle to gather 100 100 thousands of people will come from the nations of the world you have not been called to pastor a denomination i went to god and said ah. i had one man talking the other time he was did you send this man i heard the man's voice as i was talking to god his voice. That me to me, oh, that's how God does it. We started this work. And a great man of God called me. I said, the day you want to turn that work to church, let me know. I went back again to God. I said, God, somebody spoke. Up. I heard that prophecy again. You have not been called to pastor. <laughs> so I went back to the great man of God and said, God damn, say I should run a denomination. Sorry, God, what about him? You know what? He knew that day would come. So he raised this man to speak. To defend me that day. Paul said, despise not prophesy. I saw a lady. One of the mighty intercessors in our group. In Otobo, there's one man called Obed. Obed. The man said, your destiny is in three steps spoke about the first step spoke about the second step 
spoke about the third step. There's nothing the girl didn't do to change that thing. It didn't happen. The way it was said, with all her fight, that was how it came out. If it is true prophecy, there's nothing you can do to change it. It's an utterance from who? The immortal. So she was trying to fight it to see if she could. Because in the prophecy, he spoke about suffering. Huh? She was suffering the first layer of the step. So she tried to. She didn't succeed. She's, in fact, her attempt to rescue herself from the suffering plunged her deeper into it. Prophecy is powerful. And the Lord said, through the Apostle Paul, he said, despise not prophesying. You see? So it flows on the fountain of inspiration. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. If at any point where the inspiration breaks, it means the prophecy has stopped. Are you still with me? Okay. It's time to pray now. Before we pray, let me make a statement. According to the Bible, tongues and interpretation equal prophecy. But the difference between outright prophecy and tongues and interpretation is one word. Mystery. Um, the basic gift of prophecy in the basic gift of prophecy someone can say I am in your midst I am in your midst don't be afraid I am in your midst meanwhile prophecy should be judged so judge this one now somebody said the other time my people my people do not be afraid because even me myself I'm afraid sometimes God afraid Tomorrow I'm going to show us a catalog of prophecies in, from a cross-section of major churches in Nigeria. I'll show us a catalog of prophecies that have come and then we'll look at it and judge it. That's our work tomorrow. Avon, I will teach you about how God speaks and then we'll now bring the catalog and you look at it and you, you, you weep for Nigeria. my people be not afraid because even me myself i'm afraid sometimes <laughs> hallelujah i'm afraid sometimes so we'll bring a catalog now we'll begin to investigate we begin to compare those utterances with scripture. Then I will show us how to judge a prophecy. Prophecies are powerful. And the devil too can masquerade to manifest something that looks like prophecy. Just in the book of Acts and Apostles chapter 16, we see a lady under the influence of the spirit of divination was saying something that theologically fits into the description of prophecy. These are the men, the servants of the most high God that show us the way of salvation but when we come into the lecture the analysis of prophecy we'll see what is wrong with that utterance when we that's one of the case studies we're going to use and there are sometimes that god he compacts prophecy into a dream how to be able to identify that the dream that you had is a prophetic dream that reveals the will of God that he wants to administer between a period of time. If the children of God are ignorant as to how God speaks, for the Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We have accepted the lamp unto my feet. But the word of God is supposed to bring light to our path. 
is supposed to show you years to come if you don't have the advantage of that kind of sight you are not likely going to have anything to fight for we are going to pray now the, the way we are praying when you speak in tongues don't speak it too loud speak it to trouble the river of your heart the bible speaks about a river a stream having five porches by the sheep market called Bethsaida where an angel of the Lord comes in the certain season to stay as you speak in tongues what you are trying to achieve is what that angel normally comes to achieve in that lake stay there are many things in the Holy Ghost that when he stared inside of you he begins to come out he begins to come out he sends you signs and impressions he sends promptings he sends pictures hallelujah there is more excitement inside of your spirit than outside of your spirit more excitement inside than champions league if you know the things i'm talking about you can spend three hours with god and not know time flies ah and when you have done that and you are coming out somebody that oppressed by darkness whereas they can read other people when they see you they can't read you there's a masquerade from the part of the country where i'm from that they bring when the masquerade comes they can call your name call your father's name call eh? then a lady just finished praying and was passing then the mask couldn't began to say who is this lady that I, I cannot read yes when you become spontaneous the devil cannot cannot handle you you should know that you are under attack when you try to pray and no prayer is coming out you have a desire to pray but you slip off the devil wants to manage you so that you can become predictable again so that the spontaneous waters the volcano will stop speaking and erupt Ooh. 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 Ooh.
a receptacle a receptacle for the wisdom of God make me a receptacle the Bible reveals that every believer can prophesy let the pure stream of the operation of God flow through my vessel and make my vessel available ah i will not walk in darkness no verás quinto nací mamá mamá Logre ne canse manteli mo honda maho la tua Mores conge posabre Capata na comba halate mo Ole mamá 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 Ada la bala bo Le bala bo then I would raise and you have and surrender our vessels before you that through us you will have an utterance in the land a voice in the land that our generation will hear don't say the Lord because our vessels are surrendered The spark will never die because our vessels are surrendered. The volcano will be able to move in spontaneous motion because our vessels are surrendered. The devil will not be able to predict what will happen to your life because our vessels are surrendered. I'm also in my hand. Obre sata para conta mama. Thank you Lord. Thank you Father. Thank you Father. In Jesus name. We'll sing that song two times then I'll pray. And as we see fountains that have been stopped, we we'll begin to break open. Strange rivers coming out of the belly of men and women. 
the things that we have lost before this time will be recovered oh man let's sing as a congregation prayer goes on the Holy Spirit will begin to open the vessels of men refreshing will come to you there is a refreshing that is in God he said times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Father Father I ask tonight I ask tonight that every conduit pipe, every conduit pipe for the river that have been stopped before today, I ask, O oh God, that refreshing will come from heaven. Refreshing will come from heaven. That refreshing will come from heaven. That refreshing will come from heaven. Now you don't need to say amen anymore. You don't need to say amen. You don't need to say amen. You don't need to say amen. To say amen. The fountains are opening. Fountains are opening. Go say they are opening they are opening now let the fountains open up lord let the fountains open up let the fountains open up vessels of prophecy vessels of prophecy vessels of inspiration vessels of inspiration let the fountains open let the fountains open let the fountains open let the fountains open vessels of inspiration vessels of inspiration let the fountains let the fountains open. Let the fountains open. Let the fountains open. That depression that has blocked that fountain, I I break the yoke of that depression on your life. Let the fountains open. Yeah, it's opening up. It's opening up. It's opening up. Release the fountains, oh God. Release the fountains. He said, He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow. Let the fountain. 
things be released. Let it be released. The vessels of prophecy, vessels of prophecy, release the fountains. Give us an moment. Let the fountains be released. Let the connection be established. Let the spirit of utterance be transmitted. Prepare your people. Release grace upon your people. Release grace upon your people. Release grace upon your people. Grace. You, it's, it's a flood. It's a flood. It's a flood. It's a flood. Your vocal cord, your vocal cord will be overtaken. Utterance will come. Utterance will come from the belly of the spirit. Rivers will begin to go out. Something spontaneous will begin to happen. Something spontaneous will begin to happen. What begin to happen? Something spontaneous, something spontaneous, something you cannot control. Yes, the Spirit of God is opening up the fountains. There are many fountains that have been stopped, but right now the fountains have been up. Let the fountains be unstopped in the name of Jesus. So ne 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 ne. I le ma mo de na ba da ba ba la de ni pe. Isa ma na bo de ma na. Isa ma na ba ni bo. Let the fountains be unstopped in the life of the old, in the life of the young. Is it not written that it shall come to pass afterward that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh? You send young men, daughters will prophesy. Thank you, Lord. On sele braskata babora naski. Bronsa ne koske brezale bokonda balhala. Kela bonde sele kuskale. Oh yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise and lift you up. Out of their belly shall flow rivers, 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 rivers of living water, rivers of living water from the very depth of their bellies, rivers will flow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, if you see these people here, the Lord has seized them. That's how he seizes somebody under the influence of the spirit of prophecy. Is spontaneous. Now, now hear this one. That utterance, that utterance, that's the word. 
it's coming out. There's, they are not premeditating it. This is the kind of stuff that happens in Rama. In Rama. May you be that vessel that God will alter his words through. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the voice of God not be scarce around you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now listen. Listen. If there is somebody sick close to you, can you help me lay hands on the person? There's a sick person by your side. If there's a sick person by your side, just lay your hand. You brought somebody that is sick into the hall. I will just pray a simple prayer. In Jesus' name. Now, uh, ushers, please, those of them that the wine is very high you can take them to the office because we have something else to do now if someone is sick or you brought somebody sick you can put your hand where that sickness is now any kind of sickness you can put your hand there you see those are fountains of inspiration it's different from the tongues you speak when you want to pray this one is you are you are praying in the spirit you are caught up in a procession hallelujah all right in jesus name if you came sick you have something you are trusting god for healing for it's a blood condition a pain an affliction a reoccurring disease a medically certified disease just put your hand on your body we'll pray now pray now hallelujah father we give you praise there's still somebody you need to take Now it's just that we don't have time. We're supposed to do this for 30 minutes with strings. You will not believe what you will see. You will not believe what we'll still do it. I'll try and see if we can do it tomorrow. Strings. So something else, an atmosphere, a very intense atmosphere will come here. Men will begin to prophesy straight. I have a dream. An altar will be raised in this land. Put your hand where that sickness is. Let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. We thank you today. We thank you for your presence amidst us. We do not take that this great favor lightly that your presence will come into our midst and bring refreshing to our soul now lord i ask concerning them that are afflicted uh, 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 please help sylvester help susan i want to be hearing god while i'm talking Now, there's somebody that has been healed already. It's a stomach condition. A stomach condition. Stomach condition has been healed. Stomach condition has been healed already. Stomach condition. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I ask, I ask that you put your hand upon everyone that is sick, everyone that is afflicted, everyone that has a pain, a pain, a pain, a sickness, a situation. Uh, is it that the person is losing losing his or her thoughts demons come to steal your thoughts all all mental conditions 
in the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit, that foul spirit of darkness. And I command you, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. See, there is somebody here. Demons come to steal your thoughts. You forget, you forget big time. You forget big time. Where is that person? It's a demon. You forget too much. You forget big time. Demons come to steal your thoughts. Father, I break that you. I release your thoughts back to where they were taken. In the name of Jesus. I release your thought back to where they were taken. In the name of Jesus. And I release unto you a retentive memory. A retentive memory. In the name of Jesus. I break that hold. Break that hold upon you. I break that hold upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break that hold. I release your thoughts back. I release your, oh my. I release your thoughts back. In the name of Jesus. I break that hold of the devil over your life. And I release your thoughts back. In the name of Jesus. I bless you today with a memory that is retentive. Retentive. I break the hold. Break the yoke. Release your thoughts back. And I bless you with a memory that is retentive. Receive your thoughts back. And receive a memory that is retentive. I truncate that demonic activity. In the name of Jesus, I bring an end to that demonic activity as I release your thoughts back. Glory. Glory to your name. I break that hold. Break that hold of the devil. Manipulating your mind. Stealing your thoughts. I release your thoughts. And I release a retentive memory. I release your thoughts. And I release a retentive memory. I release your thoughts. And a retentive memory. I release your thoughts and a retentive memory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release your thoughts and a retentive memory in Jesus' mighty name. Now you may sit down. You may sit down. I release your thoughts. If there's anybody still coming, send them back. They heard me the first time. They didn't come. Send them back. Release your thoughts and a retentive memory in the name of Jesus. Uh, ushers, the offering baskets can go around. Why we do? Somebody was healed, Jesus. Manta Colomo. Another person healed from a pain on the leg. A pain on the leg. A pain on the leg. Somebody healed from that. Somebody healed from a stomach condition. A stomach condition a stomach condition now I'm looking for the person that is healed from the stomach condition if you were healed from a stomach condition I want to meet with you stomach condition somebody saw in a dream that you died you saw in a dream that you died you saw in a dream that you died come you saw in a dream that you died Yes, what was the condition? Stomach ache. So, what happened uh, while we pray? The pain, uh, the pain stopped, and my head, I think something, something came out was, of my head. Yes, something came out of your head. The pain stopped, and it's as if something came out of her head. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Yeah, we are free. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Yes. You you had pain there? Yesterday, but now I have healing. You had healing? 
did you feel anything on your body no. before the pain left oh, shake, shake, shake. okay you, you shook you shook and then the thing give god the glory give god the glory in the name of jesus name of jesus glory to god yes i gave a word what did i say huh? yeah, yes you see yourself you have seen you saw yourself in a dream you were dead huh? are you in that category three people all right stomach yeah okay stomach stomach uh, okay so what happened i'm feeling like a cool air it has been biting me like an ulcer pain it comes and goes when i try to fast the pain will come again so i i took on a three-day fast i started yesterday i was and to finish tomorrow so i had serious pain so you felt something cool you're still feeling it now there are two there are two signs that show that the healing anointing is operating in your life it's either that you have a cool sensation or a burning sensation now is there anybody in the hall that felt a burning sensation on your body while i pray burning sensation yeah god was healing you of something burning sensation any other person burning yeah that's the healing anointing it's it's like a burning and or it's like coolness is permanent in the name of Jesus now so you saw yourself in a dream you were dead she's also part of right. can you stretch your hands in their direction let's pray and break this you now you see hey hold it I'm seeing somebody money gets missed missed around you mysteriously money disappears that's what i'm saying money you put five thousand you come and meet three thousand five hundred you put you put you put uh, seven thousand you come and meet six thousand two hundred where are you money yes it's 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 a demon called the thief the thief the thief it's a very spiritual situation you have children in your house i'm not sure that your own is spiritual sit down this one I'm saying is spiritual. Okay, she says she locks her door. It's a serious, it's an attack. Oh. That thing, she, you lock your door, you come back, you still find that the money is not complete. Yeah. It's an attack. It's a very serious attack. Join here, join. It's a very serious situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break the yoke of death. We break the yoke of death. 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 Death, go back. Death, go back from whence you came. Go back. Go back in the name of Jesus. I say, go back in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, go back. You are delisted. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, this operation of the thief, we put it to an end. In the name of Jesus, we put the operation of the thief to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. You are blessed. Glory to your name, O oh God. Glory to your name. Oh you see, I'm seeing something that is not clear. So you help me now. Can, can we pray in tongues for two minutes? Just two minutes. It's not clear. So you help. Asanomenasile. Asanomenasale abrasketobria. Ika paratam is kenemonte. Mobera kuska. Masalato mokamante. Es mayato minakambre. Maya Tobina Saka Barra Namasaka Barra Namasaka Barra Namasaka Barra Namasaka Barra Namasala Balata Barra Namasanta Babose Nate Brekedaliko Masoliaka 
Akapanda la baburia salamunda hika manso rabalate brigade la skanda baburia eka mama mahasi zaso noke paratos embre kasuma la harabatwa kepo shanda aito kena mandos kepo sima hika boro salabate enda mama haya thank you lord in the name of jesus now listen there's somebody that is in trouble among us this is what i saw i saw that when this person you were about to wake up from sleep huh? just in the process of waking up from sleep you were trying to gain consciousness somewhere in between the lattice there you saw somebody tangibly somebody close to your bedside while you were trying to wake up from sleep but when you gain full consciousness you did not see that person i'm looking for that individual let me come again you were trying to wake up from sleep and while you were in transit trying to gain full consciousness somewhere in between unconsciousness and conscious somewhere in between you saw somebody close to your bedside but when you gain full consciousness you could not see the person anymore this is the person i'm looking for come it's an emergency now now wait wait i, I want to be sure i'm talking to the right person do you have another mic let's investigate first before this is it's a serious case I am also a manati. He go my uncle in the market. He come and go in the market. All right. Uh, what was your experience? What did you see? Praise what? the Lord. Hallelujah. As I sleep this afternoon, I saw the brother of my husband. He's running to me that they are killing teachers in Kanshua. I should wake up. I should wake up. I should wake up. That is how I rise up. This afternoon. This afternoon. Yes. Uh, well, second person. Please, can you give us? Is it is the mic that is the problem? Or okay. Uh, Donald Boto, come, 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 come and help us now. Ah, so be your ma your wife's mouthpiece. It's an emergency. And you ah, if you came with a yoke today, you'll be free Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if there's anybody among us that has a mental condition, they're attacking your brain, attacking your mind, attacking your mind, attacking your mind. When you get home today, you sleep up, sleep, and you wake up, you wake up in your true mind, Amen. your true mind. All right. Yes, please help me out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What she said, she said there is our level. That when she wake up this morning. She... Wait. The, the, did you hear me? This person I'm talking about, what, the person was in between waking up and gaining consciousness. And he saw somebody. Is that your case? Good. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Oh. Oh. So I don't even know Tim small. I should have spoken small team language. Oh yeah, yeah, help us, help us. What what did she say? That she what was she was in between unconsciousness and waking up. Yes. And she saw your neighbor. Yes. And when she gained full consciousness, she did not see that person again. That's what she said. Good. Now that's a great one. Hmm. Ah, yeah. give, give the mic, give the mic, give the mic, give the mic. We have work. When we finish this work, we'll now go. But this thing will not end here. This we will pray a simple prayer. God will do carry out a work of judgment. What? Because that person actually projected, projected through witchcraft and went there. That's what I'm saying. Went there. Um, it was day before yesterday. Day well, before yesterday. Yeah. I was sleeping. I was struggling to wake up. Okay. So when I tried to wake up 
it was as if I saw somebody. Because I didn't sleep at the bed, I slept at the on the floor. Floor, okay. So when I woke up I saw something like somebody. But while I was get, gaining consciousness. Yeah, somebody was projected into your house. But unfortunately for you, you don't know the person. So we can't strike. We will strike in in proxy. We we'll strike. <laughs> All right, go on. Go on. Praise the Lord. Uh, it, say, this morning, when I was. It happened to, to you this morning. Yes. Okay. When I was between yes. consciousness and unconsciousness. My roommate was. Standing. Mm -hmm. As it, was just, it was real. Very real. She was trying to wake me up or something. I don't know. It's very but real. When I woke up, I didn't <laughs> see anybody. Ale Mokoto. Uh, sorry we had to take some more time to do this it's very important that's why we're doing it okay can we stretch our hands and bring judgment to anyone projecting spiritually to manipulate these destinies bring judgment Meglo Roko Sakabare Naskinzo Maza Yeto Kalabo Kalabori na Santa Baborima Kalabori Masike Akelambro Saite Kabala Hira na Sakaba Rote na Zantobina Brasketabina Branta Babola Naski Eson de Lahara Naskayeto Asanto Binabra Halata Marata Sabara Kasaila Hala Barato Eso mahaya kute ma ma sando kala masi aselo mosque taya barato release her release her release her release her release her I break the yoke I break the yoke I break the yoke I break the yoke I break it. Loser! Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hey! Oh, my God. You see? Now, let me educate you a little. Three of you can go. Do you know how people die from witchcraft, witchcraft death? That's how they die. Yes. You will see what killed you. You will see who killed you before you. And just in case you have been having this experience, people projecting into your bedroom, people projecting into your sitting room, and with intentions of evil, and they have been happening, and you have not known. The next time that person projects, he will get stuck in transit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm Ose. Hey, I'm Osamina. Esamina. Kosamina. Haleskoma. Ayato. 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 It's easier to recover someone that they have not taken the spirit. It's easier to recover someone that they have not taken the spirit. If they are taking the spirit, ah, ah, it will take the hand of God for the person to come back. And you take an express word from the mouth of God for that spirit to come. This one's were marked for death. And you see, where there is no revelation, people will just stay and they'll just be dying at this kind of age. And that's why witchcraft and witchcraft churches we always fight revelation. Then you'll be that vessel of revelation. By which God will raise a standard against the tide of darkness. Tomorrow we'll talk about a few things that have to do with the operation of the prophetic in the setting of the family, in the family setting. 
then if you find someone with a what they call that kind of guitar an acoustic guitar if you have a friend that has and can play invite the person we need we need but like seven of them seven to create to create an atmosphere for the holy ghost to breathe on us as it was in Rama. that's how people die the person projects like that and he wants to the reason why you survived was because you woke up and the thief was caught they have been attempting those lives no weapon that is fashioned against you shall be able to prosper in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i see that there's someone here that some people have been accusing you falsely and we are accusing you falsely. now that thing that is happening transcends is beyond what is happening in the natural uh, yes the people met in the cover in the witchcraft cover and they said that they were going to bring about an accusation an accusation and when you now fall into bitterness it will now expose you it will expose you to attack so I counsel you trivialize it trivialize it in the name of Jesus trivialize it 